Well, Andy, it's good to have a bit of a catch up and see things, see how things are getting on here at the academy. Yeah, um, absolutely. As ever, with so many teams about the place, it's keeping you busy. Yeah. Very roughly, how are the teams getting on uh, now? We're sort of halfway through the season. Yeah, um, doing really well generally across the academy. So um, we have a total of seven teams. Um, we have teams that represent in the Football Conference Youth Alliance, Midland Floodlit League, and then various leagues across the English colleges. Um, so starting with our Football Conference Youth Alliance team. We go into the Christmas period where we take a two week break now, uh, top of the league. Uh, so obviously the performance levels of the lads have been consistent uh, from week to week. And uh, we're up against some really good opposition um, in that league. It tends to be regionalised, so obviously uh, we're in the Midlands um, section. And uh, we're up against uh, teams such as Mansfield, uh, Chasetown, Solihull, to mention a few. And uh, yesterday, um, as you're aware, uh, progressed through to the uh, last 16 of the League Cup by beating Macclesfield 2-0. Um, in addition to that, we, um, as I said, play in the Midland Floodlit League. And I think last week, uh, with a 5-1 win against Rugby, we've also gone top of that league. Um, so obviously the lads performing really well in that. And then in the English Colleges Leagues, which um, is particularly... Um, gone well is our category one team which is a very good standard of football um, I think as I speak we're in the top two um, of that league as well so hoping to progress through to the end of season playoffs. Um, well, all of the competitions obviously are, are, are vitally important do you tend to or do you have to sort of prioritise I know in, yeah. in previous years it's been the case that that conference um, league if you like it has a national yeah. um, sort of set up if you like, do you, do you generally feel that if you're at the top of that one that reflects well on, on the rest of the academy? Yeah absolutely, um, we, we feel this year um, what appears to be our players who are performing well um, should be representing Kidderminster Harriers, uh, so that's why we tend to go for on a week to week basis the lads who are performing the best would represent the uh, Conference Youth Alliance team, however uh, the Category 1 standard of the English colleges is an excellent standard of football and uh, what we tend to do is a number of our first year students would play in that standard so that gets them ready to be able to push for the conference youth uh, team and I'm delighted with the attitude and the application levels of the players who have been playing in the Category 1 league, they've been doing extremely well and we've had a number of lads who have progressed through to the conference league so, uh, so we're not devaluing the Category 1 yeah. standard because it is an excellent standard. And it gives your players a great underbelly, I suppose, and by the time they, they kick a ball, most of them in the conference youth league, they'll already have played a lot of games and yeah. uh, I guess toughened up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if I look at my um, current squad of players for the conference team, or taking the team that played yesterday, um, there was probably only two players who were a regular last year in that standard of football. So they'd had a year of playing Category 1 football or floodlit football and of course last year we did particularly well with the, the floodlit team winning the league and a number of those players now have come through to the conference team and are performing really well. How is the conference league as a standard this year because it's notoriously a, a very strong level you get, Yeah. Um, I guess there's a degree of lateral movement is there in terms yeah. of team, different teams from different areas of the country perhaps coming into it each year, what, yeah. what's the competition Yeah like? absolutely. So. Um, I think last season um, it was a bit inconsistent, so the quality of some of the teams wasn't so good. Uh, but this year we're finding, um, other than perhaps one game we've played, we've we've really been in games. It's been you know tight till the end in terms of score-wise, and I think there's a better consistency across the division this year. Um, and hopefully, uh, not that it's all about you know winning as such because we have to perform well to win games which we're doing but we're trying to get in that top two uh, if we can to qualify for the playoffs at the end of the year. Now in terms of a development I know it will please you equally to see a player scoring week in week out in that conference league and turning out for the first team as it would for a player making his debut in the Floodlet League it's about yeah. that player development but who would you say has really caught your eye this this sort of uh, academic year if you yeah, like? Yeah well obviously um, most people uh, would have seen of late. Um, we've got George Taylor and James Hancocks who um, 
who have recently signed professionally uh, for the first team, which I think we're going to talk about in a bit more detail later. Uh, but there's numerous other uh, players as well uh, that have caught the eye. So um, alongside George, who's been playing up front, we've got Callum Parker, who's been doing exceptionally well. He's in our second year uh, with us now. Um, scores goals. Um, he uh, can get hold of the ball well, uh, good for link-up play, so hopefully he can start to progress through to the under-21s more. Um, also got Matt Evans, who's been captain in the team of late, in James's absence of progressing up to the under-21s. I think Matt, centre midfield player, scored uh, 10 goals now. Technically, um, extremely good. Uh, obviously not to forget about the progress Dan Sweeney has been making as well, so obviously he signed his contract in the summer with the first team. Um, the last two or three games in particular for me has been doing exceptionally well. And you know, whilst it's probably wrong for me just to single those out, uh, because there are generally um, a whole host of other lads who have been performing consistently well and got every belief that they can try and push through to the under-21s before the season's out. Supporters will be wondering a little bit about Dan's story in the sense that he obviously became public in, in signing that professional deal. Yeah. It's always the case that players only 17, 18 years of old will go through dips yeah. uh, of, of confidence in, yeah. in personality and playing style. Yeah. I, I know he's perhaps had a bit of an up and down year since, since signing his contract, but yeah. you, you, you gather he's starting to get himself back to where he'd like to he be. He is, particularly over the last, like I've said, three or four games. Um, yesterday he was exceptional against Macclesfield, uh, scored a very good goal. Uh, Colin Gordon come down to watch the game which was uh, fantastic and uh, he performed very well uh, so hopefully at the turn of the new year you know Dan can start to work his way into that under 21 team more consistently and then hopefully start to get his opportunities at first team level. And how important has that under 21 set up done as well this year because perhaps it's been more difficult not to take a leap of faith on some players previously but the gap between uh, the under 19s and the first team has been quite big, but yeah. with that under 21 side, you've almost got a bridge between the two. Now you to, to try try a few things out and yeah. see how they get on. Absolutely, um, we we felt this year getting the under 21 team up and running was of huge value uh, for the academy and the first team. So, like you allude to there, Matt, the jump up from <laughs> in a youth team to first team is huge at any level of football. So having that under 21 football which has been now I think every couple of weeks now for my lads to go and get experience of playing with people who've got professional contracts, playing against teams which would be of a better standard um, has only helped the players to develop so I know recently this week James Hancock's played down at Bristol City got to play on some superb facilities and it was up against some stiff opposition which uh, will obviously help him to try and bridge that gap in terms of getting into the first team. And there's again that development as well isn't it? I mean if publicly it's perhaps seen that if, if a youth player at 17 signs a pro contract he, he's done, he, he's finished there, he's made it, it's mm. far from it here isn't it? They've still got yeah. a lot of homework to do if you like. A absolutely, um, you know um, there's a saying once you get that first professional contract the, the hard work starts then and it does but particularly down here we need to keep the focus on the education side as well so with George and James particularly and Dan now it's managing them on their programme so they can keep on top of their education programme so for example James and George who are training with the first team this morning how are they going to catch up on the work it's conversations that we do have with them to make sure they've still got that plan B if the football side doesn't work out for them and we've seen that evidence as well in the past with the likes of George Forsyth and particularly Luke Maxwell who yeah. as well as you know, doing a, a really good job in the first team, carried on with his studies and his under-19 games last year, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think it was this time last year that Luke and uh, Kennedy DG got their professional contracts and it was credit to both of them how they still maintained their application and attitude levels um, to complete their education. They was on our top level education programme in the extended diploma, which is the equivalent to three A levels still got that completed but was also to still maintain a level in terms of their playing performance to be able to push through to the first team and you know I think them two particularly were uh, shining examples of what this academy can uh, provide for you. 